Um, my question is, what is, how would you art, articulate the difference between zero degrees and 360 degrees in the Zen circle? So where are you sitting? Where are you now? Are you asking me? No, uh, the person who asked the question, yeah. Where are you now? Oh, I'm, I'm in, a, I'm in a, a laboratory. Okay. Is that 30, 360 or is that zero? Um, I think it can be both. <laughs> so which one would you like to choose? Um, well, let's say I choose zero. <laughs> okay, so, so, uh, so very good. Actually, you can choose. You can choose to be zero or you can choose to be 360. Same point. Zero then have many, as just now, Maria gave very wonderful sharing on this heart sutra. This I appear, then zero appear. And, but if you correctly use this I, turn this small I into big I for others, then all the degrees all disappear, not even 360. So you are in the laboratory, right? Yes. What do you do there? I'm a student. Uh, so when you're learning, just learn that 360. What do you see now behind you? Behind me. Behind, yeah. Oh, there's some equipment. There's some. What kind? What kind of equipment? Um, can you can you be more clear? There's what kind? Um, electronics equipment for making circuit boards and uh, testing them. Uh, is, yeah. So, is there any I mind me in those equipment? Um. No. Then they are teaching us what is 360. <laughs> <laughs> so any other question? Diane has a question. Okay. Hello, Diane. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> I'm, I'm very curious. I'm very curious. I wonder if you might tell us your your Zen story and talk about maybe when you were young and how, how you decided to be, I'm very curious how, how you decided to become a nun. Could you please tell us a little bit? Okay, uh, it's true. I have many experience about uh, a practice itself. Uh, but if you ask me why I want to become a nun, actually, I don't want to become a nun because uh, seeing many people, uh, you know, monastic, wow, they are so serious. And uh, I, I, I thought if I become a nun, I will break all those precepts. But what I like is I like to practice. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a one very interesting uh, 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 sharing with you all is uh, after, you know, I, I learned uh, Buddhism, I, uh, I um, encounter many Buddhist Buddhists, they, they are into the knowledge, but not so much practice. So I decide, okay, I want to practice. So I went to Thailand. At that time, I uh, go to Ajahn Chah place. And I, well, and I, after I went there, it's so beautiful. It's like pure land. So I decided to stay there. So after some time, then uh, Ajahn Cha, actually, uh, I met Ajahn Cha, and he uh, told me, no hair is very good, you know, you don't have to use shampoo. So <laughs> I said, well, it's true, but I can see your bald head full of mosquitoes. So we just, first, <laughs> We just laugh. And then after a while, I thought, okay, I want to stay here and practice. And then they say, if you stay here, you have to become a nun. And I said, huh? <laughs> I don't want to become a nun. <laughs> but then I want to practice. So I have to 
get a visa. I have to leave the country, come back with a visa so I can continue my practice. So after I got the visa, I talked to the abbot there. I said, okay, I just want to become a nun for two years. And uh, uh, because I, you know, I just like to practice, I don't want to become a nun. Mm -hmm. And this monk really hit me. He said, don't tell me you want to do this to become a nun for two years. Just finish this three months retreat and let's talk. <laughs> <laughs> so then, mm. well, after that, then I've been a nun since. I'm, this year is my 40 years 40 of being years. a nun. Wow. That's wonderful. So, but, then, but then my vow is two years. So this 40 years is not 40 years. This 40 mm -hmm. years actually is not, not yet two years because my <laughs> vow is to become a nun for two years. So... Mm. That's my story of wanting to become a nun. Mm. But then more important to be a monk or a lay people, to me, is only a, a tool. Mm -hmm. You know, but maybe this lifetime, this tool is good for this, this body to yeah. use, to practice. More, more important is the practice itself. I love practicing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So the next person is Bethan uh, Dursma, who has a question. Um, hello. Um, I just wanted to ask. Um, a lot of the time, I'm not necessarily very present or very um mindful about what I'm doing. Um, and I'm not in the moment. And I was just wondering, what are some ways to, um ensure I'm more mindful of what I'm doing at every moment. Okay, in Hong Kong, I have uh, a, a, a form, well, I, how to say, I have uh, three, five alphabet to help us to do this. One is called A, B, C, D, and E. A means, what are you doing right now? So just as what you share, when we are doing something, sometimes we cannot really uh, pay attention. We can't, we can't really focus. At that time, we can use B. B means breathing. B plus C. C means our center. You know, everybody has a, a, a center. In our school, we talk this center is in, in our lower belly. So if we breathe B, uh, deeply to our lower belly, then this A, B, C, this B and C actually help us to come back to this moment. What are we doing right now? But very often we have disturbances from outside situation or even our absent-minded. So we cannot come back to this A, what we are doing right now. So with a few breath like B and C, then it will help us to bring ourselves back to this moment. And uh, there's one thing we like to mix something. D means don't make anything. When you're not doing, don't make anything at that time, this don't know mind appear. And E is the effort, the effort of what? To enjoy what we're doing right now, moment to moment, moment to moment. This is how I, uh, we share this A, B, C, D, and E to help ourselves to bring our mind back to this moment. Maybe you can try that. Thank you very much. That's great. You, yeah, thank you for your question. The next person is um, Matt Chiang, who has a question. Hello, so Master Daekwon. Thank you Hello. for being here. Um, I had a question. So I think um, maybe I heard somewhere that if you practice a lot, or maybe if you're a Zen master, then you can connect with other people's minds. So can you can you tell me like what is it? Can you do that if you're a Zen master? I can only see you are smiling. 
So you must be very happy at this moment. This is how I connect with you. Okay. So it's just like a normal person. <laughs> Correct. Zen master is not special. I can share with you the definition of Zen master. Uh, I have a very interesting story to share when we are, uh, when I am traveling together with Zen Master Song San uh, to Germany that time. And at that time, uh, uh, we, are in, uh, uh, we are like uh, after the Dharma talk. So one of our Zen Master's uh, students together, three of us, and uh, we are just talking. And at that time, Sen Master Song San asked his student, what are you carrying all the time? He, he, with a notebook, he said. And the, the student said, this is my Bible. Uh, he said, I, uh, are you carrying a Bible? Are you, what are you carrying? And he said, no, I'm not carrying a Bible. I'm carrying uh, you around. And, uh, and then Sen Master said, no, you are, uh, I'm, I'm not a Bible, I'm not a Zen master. Zen masters mean, oh, and what does it mean, Zen master? Zen master means toilet paper. So Zen master is not special. And toilet paper is very important, you know, after you, you want to clean whatever, you know, after your small business, big business, you need a tissue paper, right? That is called Zen master. So Zen Master is not special. Zen Master is toilet paper. Okay, I'll remember that next time I, I use toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I hope you like your Zen Master toilet paper. <laughs> the next person is George uh, Bethesda. Uh, Abithea, I'm sorry. Hi, Abithea. Hi, nice to see everyone. And Jim Master, wonderful to uh, meet you through Zoom. Um, I have a question. I, I still have a lot of fear of losing this, this body of mine. I've been practicing pretty, I've been practicing regularly for about seven years. And um, it's, uh, it's sometimes it's a motivation, but other times it's it's very difficult. So I was wondering if you have any advice, any way to um, to to practice with fear, I guess. And it's all made. I I understand it's made up in my mind. I mean, I mean I don't know. I mean I could, you know, you don't know when you're going to die. But I I just have all this this fear sometimes. You know, Sen Master Song San always said, uh, when we are born, actually we are, uh, we are dead already. Every moment we are dying. So you don't have to wait until you die. So yeah. uh, to me, this fear is very natural. Then of course we, in our school, we have this, uh, you know, you can investigate. What, what is this? But if you don't label fear, there's no fear actually. Maybe you can try that. When this fear, some feeling appears, don't, don't label it. Okay. Don't label it. Just, you know, just now we share this A, B, C, D, and E. I find it very helpful is because we indulging with our feelings so often, then this feeling become our master. But feeling is not our master. Feeling is coming and going. So that means understand who is our true master. Okay. Yeah? If you, if you, uh, if this is your house, you are the owner of this body, which is your house. Um, and if uh, like fear is only a guest. So if they come, then you don't, you don't have to entertain them. So who, then at that time you can ask, who is the boss then? Okay. What is this? And, oh. then, and, and then you can come back to A, A means what are you doing right now? Okay. And if 
still have difficulty, you come deep briefly right. while you're doing something. And if there's anything feeling up here, don't make anything. Keep this on no mind and try, try, try this effort. Yeah. And put joy in your practice, okay? Right. Don't okay. put joy in your fear. Maybe you are you enjoying your fear. Don't enjoy in your fear. <laughs> enjoy. Come back to be your own master. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that that um that yeah, something's there that feels that feels good. So uh, I'll I won't be attached so much to my feelings and I'll I'll just take a look at what is this and and so forth. But thank you very much, and Master. Thank you, John. The next question is by Tyler. Hello. Um, so the United States right now, it's a very politically divided country. And there's a lot of anger and tension. Um, and from my understanding, Hong Kong is also a very politically divided place right now. Um, and in the United States, if you think about Zen centers, there's kind of different ways of approaching this. Like the Cambridge Zen Center has always been kind of people are their own people and they discuss freely the political situations going on. Whereas other Zen centers, the rule is like, let's not talk about any political stuff while we're at the Zen Center and just focus on the practice. And I'm just wondering as the kind of manager of the Subang Zen Center, what, how you've been working with the political tensions in Hong Kong and how that energy comes into the Zen Center uh, that's a very good question. So, um, ac actually, political, for me, uh, I always share with our students here, they are like floating clouds. Yeah? Which group, which color doesn't matter, they are all floating clouds. And if we always, we can talk about this floating clouds and uh, what color they are, what, which direction they are floating, but that's always changing. Sen Sensor's job is fine in this changing, in this floating cloud, there's one thing that never changed. If all politi po politicians, all different opinion, everybody return to that not changing, and I think there is harmony. So Sen Sen's job is not only talk about political issue, which they are just floating cloud. You and me are also floating cloud, but floating cloud itself not really exists, but you can, you can see it, you can uh, forecast it, but they are always changing. So, but this floating cloud will become rain. So if the rain fall into the ocean, then it's called ocean water salty water. But if this floating cloud rain fall into the reservoir, then become reservoir water. So, and, uh, and if this water flow into this uh, gutter, it's become dirty water. So it doesn't matter, but the water different kind, but how we use, but the, the water itself have this H2O. So it doesn't matter what political, what opinion you have, and I think the original job for, for us, for human, is to find our H2O. That's, that is the polit, polit, political uh, standpoint for Zen Center. So it doesn't matter. If we find our H2O, uh, then we always in harmony. If you're in the sea, you just do ocean job. If you're in the reservoir, you do your reservoir job. And if you flow into these dirty gutter, also you have a job because we rain to clean up those dirty uh, sewage, you know. So sewage system also need water, right? And, but if you uh, purify it, and it also can get this pure, this H2O. This H2O is like our pure and clear one thing which I really like in our school teaching. And one more thing is once we have that H2O, which is clear, and this is our practice. Our practice is moment to moment to keep clear mind, clear, clear, clear like space. But clear like space doesn't mean it has 
nothing. Clear like space, you will still have thunderstorm, you still have floating cloud, you still have birds and butterflies, all kinds of animals are flying around. We have aeroplane, we have rockets. Many things are happening in this clear space. But this clear space allow everything to happen and not the, they never change this clear space. So our Zen sense senses job is to share this practice, this uh, knowledge to everyone to obtain this clear mind, clear like space. And if anything appear, you know, in our, uh, one of our school teaching is keep distance. Any, any situation appear, any emotion appear, they are there, but you, you don't have to, you know, indulge or identify with those things because the space itself can, can hold everything. The space is not the bird, but the bird is flying in the space. So that point is very important. And if you can find that point, then we can make harmony. And in fact, if every, every politician, every government, they are working on that harmony point, then I think this world is, will be a lovely world to, for us. It's just not a conflict world. And in fact, I, uh, we have one workshop in, happened in one time in Hong Kong, in the Gok Su. We have uh, the police, you know, people don't like police. And then there's another politician called Yellow, Yellow Color. But they appear in our workshop. At that time, we share this, uh, you know, uh, coming back to this point we call primary point. So if we can come back to this point of your H2O, my H2O is the same, then we can make friends. So at that workshop, actually, they, you know, they talk and then they cry and then they understand each other and then they become good friends again and help each other. So politicians, different group is not against each other is how we can help use what we can, what we are good at to help each other. That is a true politician. Thank That's a much. true sense practitioner. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for the great, great answer. Thank you. Thank you. Next person is Ted. Hi. Um, first of all, thank you, Maria, for a great intro talk. Um, you actually made me think of the next question, which um, I realized during your story that I started the practice to answer the question of what am I? And I like to use it in the mantra meditation. But Maria's talk has made me rethink it completely. And so my question is, is that an ego practice? Should I drop what am I? Is that harmful to what my end goal is? So you ask Maria, or you're asking me. <laughs> I'll ask anyone who can answer. <laughs> okay, actually, uh, you, you have a very good point. Uh, the more important is the question itself, the doubt. If you, you know, when you're sincerely practicing, then it's not about the word itself because word itself goes to intellectual thinking. But if you're practicing means you really, there's some, some doubt. That doubt is something, you know, it can be what is this, it can be what am I, it can be just, uh, you know, you're stuck, which has no, but, no, no verbal, there's no, no words in it, but that, that kind of investigation is very powerful. You know, I, uh, one time, um, I, I can do, I can uh, maybe share with what is this, what am I? 
actually I'm not so much use word and my uh, I use like a uh, something is like what is this? What is this? Uh, you know, one time I have a solo retreat, almost a hundred days solo retreat in my room, in a in a set in in a in a flat, not yet not in a in a in a in a jungle. So in a flat, I had this uh, hundred day retreat, and during this hundred day retreat, my Thailand teacher called me. So he already very old. So even though I'm in solo retreat, I answered the phone call. Then when he called, then I told him I was in this retreat. And it seems he didn't hear. I'm having a solo retreat. Solo retreat for practitioner is very important. That's like what you say, this I is very important. Then he keeps saying something, asking me questions. And then I said, sorry, Long Po, I'm in a retreat. I cannot help you right now. Then I hung up and I have this anger with me really big anger and I feel so ashamed because how can I get angry with my teacher you know I, I truly respect all my teachers but how can I have this anger so and this anger will not leave me alone it's like all the time it's with me and I know it's no good this anger is no good at that time also I was a little um uh, not well, my body is not well. So I can't even bow, but because of this anger, I start bowing. First I bow one awake bow, and then slowly said, wow, wow, this anger is still there. Well, this anger will not let me go. It's not, I don't want to let go of this anger, but this anger will not let me go. So what can I do? What is this? So I start more bowing and then try, and then within three days from 300 bow, one, I, first, I can only do one awake bow. Then slowly I do, okay, body, mind, and speech. Maybe I should do 300 bow. Still doesn't work. So I said, maybe I should bow more. My six senses, maybe I should bow more. So I can uh, bow up to 600 bow. But this anger will still not let me go. Anytime walking, standing, lying down, eating, this anger is on, always there. And on the, after a few days in the morning, then I was doing this uh, uh, body down exercise. And when I'm doing this exercise, there's one window in my room, I can see the mountain. So then when I was looking through the window, I saw this, uh, this tree. Then I remember this Kong An. Why Bodhidharma come to China? This Kong An suddenly appear. Then I said, yeah, why Bodhidharma come to China? Then I said, why, Bo why does anger come to this consciousness? I just little changed the question. Then suddenly, then my eyes caught sight with the tree. And I said, the tree is green. Then boom all this anger disappear and only joy. But this joy only lasts for three days. Then this anger again appear. <laughs> so then I can connect with uh, Maria's story. Then I was doing this, uh, this uh, Heart Sutra. Actually, I was chanting this Heart Sutra. And then when I chant up to no, uh, no appear, no disappear, and boom. Now, finally, all the anger, you know, die out. So, actually, what am I, what this is, is something appear inside deeply in us that we want to resolve. We want to find out what this is. We want to transform it. So, the question itself, uh, if it is a dry, dry question, it won't work. But if something inside you is really is bothering you and you want to understand it, transform it, and we, there are many, many methods are helping us. 
So this what am I, what is this can be? Why, uh, why, why Bodhidharma comes to China? Why does anger come to this consciousness? Same as what it is, same as what am I? And when the time is ripe, when the effort, this effort, we're not giving up this effort of trying, you know, work, you know, we're just coming back to this moment, then suddenly it will disappear by itself. And when they come back again, we have to try because all this knowledge we understand, all this teaching we understand, but our direct experience is very important. So big question is helping us to have a direct experience, not only in a, a, a logical way, but not only in through understanding and knowledge. Thank you. I'll worry less about my big question. It's about sitting. <laughs> All right, we have... Um... Uh, time for two more questions, and I'm going to take Eileen first, and then we're going to end with Juliana, so we have the zero 360 degree full circle. <laughs> so, um, Eileen, you're next. Tifu. Hello, Eileen. Um, in the description of your journey, there were several changes. When you went to Thailand, you only wanted to practice. After three months of sitting, you decided, okay, I can become a nun for two years. And I suppose at the end of two years, you would have thought again, and you continued. And then one day you met Zen Master Sun San, and it changed again. Can you remember yeah, at yeah. each point, what was the precipitating thing that caused this change? Actually, I missed some of your questions after oh. two years. Uh, what? Because after, uh, two, after two years, you, you, you kept going. Yeah. Then you and became, then, then you met Zen Master Sun San and changed again, became Zen uh, Master. At each point, was there something specific that precipitated this change in perception or direction? Uh... So it's like this. Uh, I won't say change. It's just this. Uh, this role open to me. Um, I never think about leaving Thailand. So, uh, but but somehow leaving Thailand is just uh, you know helping me to move on. So, and. Uh, after all these uh, practice, these changes, actually, doesn't matter. They, all these changes are floating clouds. As I said, floating cloud is only just something we recorded, but floating cloud, more important is to find this, uh, this uh, one pure and clear thing. So this one pure and clear thing never change. Only situation change. So each situation is only uh, more deepening our one pure and clear thing. So I was hoping that Juliana would be asking the last question, but unfortunately she had to leave at 8.30. So I will ask I'm sorry. on her behalf. I am sorry. Okay. I know it would have been so beautiful to bookends, you know, where we could have like done the whole circle. But um, I was wondering, um, have you, when, what does one pure thing feel like? <laughs> You're talking, right? <laughs> You're laughing. Well, just laugh, just talk. At that time, is you don't have to conceptualize everything. You know, things just keep coming. Actually, in our school, is moment to moment. What are we doing right now? This moment is clear. 
then this one pure, clear thing is clear. One pure and clear thing always with us. Never, it doesn't matter where you are in the ocean water, you are in the vessel water, or you are the coffee, or you are tea, or you are in this uh, Chinese medicine, or you are the soup, doesn't matter. But everything, they have this, sub this substance we call H2O. We, in our Zen school, we have to say, this is our true nature, or this is uh, our clear, one pure and clear thing. So if we don't attach to those uh, situations, those tastes, then whatever it appear in front of us, we just be with it. Good situation doesn't matter, bad situation doesn't matter. You just be with it, then that time, if we are not too much uh, like uh, uh, thinking, then already that pure and clear thing is manifesting itself. Moment to moment, what are you doing? Just do it in our, in our school. And the direction also is important, is uh, keep moment to moment and how we use this moment to make correct life. What is correct life? You know, correct life is uh, it's not about myself. It's about how we benefit, not only you, but everyone. I like the Buddhist teaching. They say, si lei lei ta in Chinese means you also help yourself. By helping yourself, actually you are helping everyone. And in fact, you're, if when you're helping everyone, actually you're helping yourself. Uh, this is a very good teaching for us. Thank you so much for this very important reminder. <laughs> we need to hear it more often. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to say some final words? <laughs> uh, so this world is, you know, like now also in different countries have different problems. Hong Kong also have many problems. But I all, you know, uh, problems are very good for, for, for us. Problems mean all ours, if we are a practitioner, doesn't matter what tradition you are practicing, our mission is to make harmony and not to, problem is not for us to worry, problems is for us to learn, to digest and make something beautiful out of it. So then because of this uh, direction, then uh, it's so wonderful. We have this inter international Sangha, we have so many Zen centers. And if all of our Zen center in the worldwide, uh, worldwide wise, then we are helping this world, even in a very small way, doesn't matter. But at least if one person make harmony, this world have one less person making problem. So this world need all of us and we need all these problems. And these problems, after we look back, because they are also floating cloud, floating cloud itself doesn't exist. It always changes. And if we think we are also floating cloud, then everything will be not suffering. It's fun, actually it's fun and it's joy and it's bringing people together. And I, I think Sam Master Song San want us to, to want to see us like that. Yeah, helping each other. And I hope we continue to help each other uh, in this way. Thank you very much for all of you. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, everyone, all the Thank you, Maria. You give really wonderful downward talk. Well, so I hope to meet you more in future. Thank you. Thank you so much, Zen Master, for um, this very much needed inspiration and actually bringing joy into our lives through your presence. So thank you.